Hey guys, check out my new iPhone. It's got the notch on the front, big old body screen, and even the camera bump on the back is there. It's the iPhone! Oh, but wait, this isn't the iPhone. It's the new Zenfone 5. And yes, it does look like that Apple product. Ooh, I can feel all the notch haters cringe. Ooh, I hate that notch. And all those Apple fans collectively groaning as their form factor is copied again. Wee! <laughs> All right, all right, let's uh, be serious for a second. This is the new Asus Zenfone 5, and yes, it does look like an Apple product. Now, let's get over it and talk about specs. This is a pre-production unit, but at least the specs are pretty solid. Snapdragon 636 with a new multi-core AI, what's it called? And it supposedly does a lot for the phone. In fact, a lot of the features that generally we just call decent scripting is now AI controlled on the new Zenfone. AI photography, AI charging, AI display, eh? Well, all right, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe this AI thing will be great. Or maybe it's just another trend like that face unlock feature on Androids, am I right? Anyway, it looks pretty good. Nice sleek lines everywhere, and they brought back what I've always loved on the Zenfone 3, the glass back with that Asus co-centric circle design. It does look great and unique to the brand. Nice. I said I was going to talk specs and let's do that. It's got a new 19 by 9 ratio display with a notch clocking in at a 2246 by 1080 resolution at 500 nits and DCI-P3 wide color gamut. It looks real good from where I'm sitting and it does get rid of a lot of bezels. It's still not a curved infinity display that really eliminates the bezels on the sides, but it looks good nonetheless. Speaking of which, who knew that Androids could do this whole screen navigation better than Apple? While the iPhone needs a bunch of annoying gestures to multitask, Android has on-screen buttons that make it a cinch. Ha! Huh, take that, fruity phones! For cameras, we're getting an optically stabilized 12 megapixel main snapper plus 8 megapixel wide and another 8 megapixels in the front, which is pretty standard. Thank God Asus didn't fall into the whole let's cram more megapixels than sense into our front camera trend, huh? Now that deserves some praise. Anyway, maybe I should stop hating on things. This phone, honestly, if we just focus on the real stuff and not the marketing terms, it seems like a good solid smartphone. 3,300 milliamp hours with a good mid-range processor, a big bright display, and a form factor that I'd love to take home and wipe fingerprints off all day. It's a very promising phone with all the features I'd want, but the thing is, Asus hasn't been impressing us with their pricing decisions as of late, and they've been punching way above their spec rate over the past couple of years. To that fact, I don't know if I should be excited about this and afterwards be let down by the price. That's happened more than enough times with Asus now that I think that's why I have commitment issues. So let's summarize. This is the new Zenfone 5. It's got great mid-range specs, looks great, has yet unproven AI features, and we don't yet know the pricing. Given Asus's track record, I think the cameras will be great, design and build will be excellent, the AI features is probably marketing fluff, and I really do hope the pricing is competitive. That about wraps it up for this preview of the pre-production Asus Zenfone 5 unit. I'm Alex from thetechnoclass.com, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.